well known. I feel like that's just easy to say. But their styles are very different. So watching the mirror, I think is going to be pretty interesting just because different approaches to one character's pitch. I feel is the best way to showcase just how good of a character he is. Like, E, always known for his aggression. He's going to constantly hound down Stretch. But Stretch, I feel, is a little bit more creative with the character's kit. Has a bit of a better understanding of what Lucina's tools are capable of. Um, whereas Mystery is a bit of a less is more kind of guy. May not use all of Lucina's kit to the best of her uh, ability, but definitely cooks what he's able to do. And on top of that, a good amount of player sense behind E and godlike reactions. I feel like he can put in the work against Stretch, but it would be very interesting to see Stretch take the win here. Because, you know, despite the caliber of play that E is usually hosted up to be, I think it's a very doable match for Stretch. Especially as the hunt for first blood goes in favor of Mr. E after a bit of an offstage scramble. I like how E is trying to take towards center stage, maintain this plat. Brought it up in the previous game uh, with Stretch on the mic about how protecting base uh, beneath base plat of Smashville is so good for so much of the cast. Especially because Lucina doesn't even have to leave the ground to assert pressure. And E has always played in such a strong sense of stage control behind his Lucina as far as like what to prioritize. But Stretch managing to nab out of stock, evens things up a little bit. Give him one good combo, and he should be able to bring himself uh, back into the mix. Little callouts here and there, the jumps out of shields, the impatience at the ledge. These guys know what their characters can do, and it's pretty evident, but he trying to just hit the gas harder is what's been paying out for him. Much more. Like, he's just swinging as much as he can, but Lucina does a good job of keeping, well, Lucina in check, as we see from the uh, dueling updates. And right now, E is doing a fantastic job of keeping Stretch off the ground, and this is looking really, really scary for Stretch because he just has to find a way to get back, but, wow. That was really interesting for Mr. E. I think he was going for a parry attempt there by the uh, drop shields, but, you know, still got out of that interaction unfazed. Yeah, he seemed like he wasn't as confident with his timing for it, so he just figured to dip give himself the space to reset the situation, which is a fine option to go for. There's no reason to, like, risk tying up a situation yep. when you have a fairly healthy stock of lead. And just, like, the mental pressure of, like, using the neutral B like that, it, like, was enough to make Mr. E back away. And so you saw Stretch going for that again, wanting to reassert the stage control for himself, but Mr. E this time decided to challenge it with a down A, which really worked out for his favor. Ooh. Has to be really, really careful about F smashing on uh, Mr. E's shield like that. But uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm Dilly Amgar. Um, sorry to be jumping in so late into the set. I'm here with. Well, Call me Frank if you want Frank. to. Uh, yep. Hangman. Frank. That's the tag. Hangman. Um, so, yeah, so I didn't get to see much of this game. So, what were your thoughts so far on game one? So, as far as game one went, I feel like the match itself was very evenly paced. And that's what I was sort of uh, going into in the pregame to this, where like they've both been playing Lucina for very long. They both have different styles with the character and a different approach. But I feel like E's style in particular is edging him forward right now yep. because he's a bit more on the aggressive side. He knows how to really take the momentum he builds in a set and just smother his opponent with it. And in game one, we saw a lot of him swinging more on stretch, taking more advantage of the stage control that he garnered. And using that to just outright bully Stretch, he put on more percentage, he maintained a stock lead, a bit healthier. And it wasn't that Stretch was playing particularly bad or getting severely outplayed, it was just he had the numbers game against him with much less room to land. Bring There's a really this. beautifully spaced back here from uh, Mr. Rita, already wrapping up the first stock of the set, but Stretch is starting to bring him back with a down throw up there. And what I've noticed that, like a lot is like where Stretch is just like racking up that percent is like, not only in those juggle situations, but when he is off stage, Mr. E is just like able to keep him there for such a long time. And and just like that, getting a falling up there into another up there, already putting them almost even percent. But Stretch is finally taking a, a little bit of a positional lead for himself, but giving it all up to try to lead the low recovery. 
one of the strongest aspects of Lucina as a character has always been her ability to edge guard. And I feel like he is one of the, the top Lucinas who's like truly exemplified that. When he's at the ledge, he's a dude, yep. but Stretch is not to be slept on. Already showcasing that he can tie things back up. But we saw this in game one as well. He tied up the stocks, he needs to tie up that damage, otherwise he's just gonna run away with the momentum. And right now, like, what Stretch really has to be wary of are his full hops because you see Mr. Lee catching his landings a lot with f -tilt, and both of them are just, like, swinging repeatedly on each other's shields. Right now, whittling them down slowly. And both of these uh, characters have really, really safe options. None of them are going to be risking anything after getting their shield hit. And if they're managing to catch things out as he further surmounts his lead. And I it's just rough because it's, it's clear why Stretch would want to bring anyone to Final Destination. It's a phenomenal stage for Lucina. But I feel like he has built a, like his ultimate dynasty on his play on FD. Yeah. It's such a good stage for any character that wants to edge guard, and especially any player who's willing to risk getting aggressive at the ledge. And I, once again, like you just see like how much pressure Stretch exerts with his usage of the neutral B right there, because he forced a hasty option from Mr. Lee, and as a result, he, now he is so the stage control for himself. But ooh, letting uh, Mr. Lee get the roll behind his shield, unable to punish in time, and once again, like Stretch's use of neutral B, I feel like is really, really unique in a way that he like conditions you throughout the entire set, and he's like, are you gonna shield this? Are you gonna pay this? Are you gonna drop this? Or are you gonna run away from this and then let me come back for free? Yeah, that's one thing that I appreciate about Stretch's Lucina as opposed to a lot of the other local or higher level Lucinas is the fact that he's ready and willing to make use of a lot of Lucina's kit and he knows how to mix it up. So yep. like we've seen a lot of the dancing blade for mixing up movement. Mm. Oh. But it's the counter from E that lets him get the 2-0 over Stretch for the win. And that was like at that point, like that was a very, very like clean edge guard for Mr. E because he burned um Stretch's jump. Stretch really could only recover low and didn't have too much of an opportunity to drift. And to top it off, Mr. E has the exact same like drift and fall speed as because it is a ditto. So he can easily just like follow the character down and then react with a down B um, accordingly. Yeah, um, dittos are rough, buddy. Yep. And